The National Weather Service in Caribou would like to present a short training video on ice accumulation forecasts. The purpose of this quick training is to review what the National Weather Service uses for ice accumulation forecasts. So why is this important? Well, there are actually numerous different methods of measuring ice accumulation, which can provide substantially different readings for the same amount of ice. All decision makers must have an accurate understanding to assure there are not any communication failures in the amount of ice that is being forecasted and the potential impacts associated with this ice. The two most standard ice accumulation measurement techniques are ele elevated horizontal ice thickness, which is directly measuring ice thickness on an object that is off the ground and the second is called elevated radial ice thickness, which is a technique of measuring ice around a branch or power line. When measuring ice around a power line, there are additional ways of measuring the ice, depending on if the ice has accumulated uniformly or non-uniformly around the object. Utility companies mostly use this mean radial ice thickness on their impact models. Fortunately, there are simple mathematical formulas that can be used to convert between the different measuring methods. So what is the big deal about these different measuring techniques? Well, if you aren't aware of what measuring technique the ice accumulation report is, you can have large interpretation errors on how much ice, and thus the weight load there is on a surface-based object. Here you'll see an example of ice accumulating around a wire. This example shows the difference of one inch of non-uniform ice accumulation around one side of a wire compared to one inch of uniform ice around a wire. Both measurements could be considered one inch of ice, but the actual water weight on the uniform ice accumulation wire would be double that of the non-uniform wire. The impact due to this water weight would most likely be substantially different. So the key takeaways from this is that the National Weather Service official ice accumulation forecast is based off elevated horizontal flat surface and not mean radial ice thickness. To get the mean radial ice thickness, you need to multiply the National Weather Service ice accumulation forecast by 0.4 to get the equivalent mean radial ice thickness accumulation. This means a forecasted ice accumulation by the National Weather Service is 1 inch. The mean radial ice accumulation forecast would only be 0.4 inches. To get a half an inch of mean radial ice thickness, the National Weather Service official forecast would have to be 1.25 inches of ice. Even though the forecasted amounts are different, in these examples between the two methods, the amount of ice and thus ice load is still the same. So to find this product, you will need to navigate to our website and then select the winter weather tile as shown in this example off our main page or you can go directly to the URL on the slide. Once you are on the winter weather page, select the ice accumulation forecast tab at the top to view the storm total ice accumulation forecast. In addition to the event summary forecast, we also provide ice accumulation forecasts in six hour forecast blocks. These are useful for identifying the period when we expect the greatest ice accumulation to occur. The storm total ice accumulation varies depending on the length of the event. The six hour accumulation forecasts go out three days in incremental six hour forecast time blocks, for example, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. The ice accumulation forecast is updated twice daily around 3.30 p.m. or 3.30 a.m but it can be updated as needed, especially within a day during a rapidly changing weather event. Forecast graphics on the web typically have a 15 minute lag to be populated once the official forecast has been updated. 
Looking at the ice accumulation forecast graphics, the storm total ice accumulation is very similar to most of our graphical forecast products. Two things to key, on, to key in on is the valid time at the top of the graphic, which shows the total event time for the accumulation. In addition, the issuance time is located on the bottom of the graphic. There isn't too much difference between the storm total ice accumulation graphic and the six hour forecast graphic. The biggest difference is the loop controls, which allow the user to toggle through the different forecast times. So if you have any questions on this ice accumulation forecast products, please email the Warren Coronation Meteorologist Donald Dumont via the email on the slide. In addition, if you would like more detailed training on ice accumulation, please follow this provided link. Thank you for your time.